Welcome everybody to another episode of Dr. Matt and Dr. Mark's Medical Podcast. I'm Dr. Mark Todorovich. I'm joined by my co-host. Matthew. Matthew, that's his name. Dr. Matthew Barton. Uh, we're both senior lecturers of anatomy and physiology. Does that mean we're old? Uh, yeah. Well, we're not decrepit lecturers of anatomy and physiology and pathophysiology and pharmacology at Griffith University in beautiful, sunny Queensland, Australia. And we've got another episode today, Matt. Blood lipids yes. in seven minutes. Well, we're talking about dietary fats mainly and dietary lipids. Uh, and so I think the first place to begin is we need to the talk mouth. about... Oof, okay, Matt's jumping straight into it. Let's talk about digesting fats. So I want you to imagine your body into a big, delicious cheeseburger. Okay, yes. You take that bite, you start to chew, chew, chew. What's in that cheeseburger? Um... <clears throat> From the fat point of view? Uh, I think from the macronutrient point of view. Oh, the, the burger itself. So that's the um, the baked good. <laughs> that's a carbohydrate. Yep. Um, the cheese, dairy, fat. And then there's the meat, which um, is protein and fat. And then if it's got lettuce. Does cheeseburgers have lettuce? Some do. Okay. So there's a lot of fat and protein. Okay. And, and carbs in the bun. Yeah, in the, in the bun. Yeah, I thought you said the bum. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it goes to the bum. Now, ultimately, uh, now uh, the fat itself probably more saturated fat. But, Maybe, but we can talk about that in the podcast. That's right. This is a teaser. Yes, we are interviewing today, Dr. Kevin Clatt. Um, Dr. Clatt is a postdoctoral fellow at Baylor. College of Medicine, and he is a nutrition researcher. He knows everything there is about lipids, uh, and so he's going to correct us. But what we're going to go through now is a bit of an anatomy and, <laughs> anatomy and physiology precursor to the episode. So as Matt indicated, we've got the three macronutrients, proteins, fats, and carbs in that burger. So let's focus on the patty and, <laughs> and that's not your grandmother, <laughs> and the cheese. Okay, the fats, basically. Yes. Right? All right, so these fats or dietary lipids, for example, are going to be triglycerides which are made up of three fatty acids and a glycerol, yep. cholesterol, yep. and phospholipids. Sounds good. All right, there are dietary and maybe lipids. maybe three fatty, fatty acids? And a couple of free fatty acids. Okay, so in the mouth, chew it up, yep. down the esophagus, into the stomach, not much happens there for fat. In we go into the duodenum. Now we have to start breaking it down. Yeah, so this is the first major site of digestion for fat. Carbs and proteins have already pretty much been digested predominantly, but because you know you've cooked with oil in a pan before, and we know that oil loves to come together to form a big globule. The same thing happens with the fats that we ingest, right? right? So by the time it gets to the first part of the small intestines, the duodenum, it's just a big fat globule that needs to be cut up and broken down so big, it can be absorbed. A big absorbed. fatberg. Yeah, a fatberg, like an iceberg. I assume. That's right. Yeah. Okay. They find not, those not in a Mark Wahlberg. They find those reference. in sewage systems where it's just big globules of fat. Do they? So, therefore, we've got to break that uh, fatberg up. That's right. And how do we do that? Okay, so by the time the fat gets in from the stomach to the duodenum, yep. it stimulates these cells on the wall of the duodenum called enteroendocrine cells. They release two important hormones. What are they? CCK. Which is? Um, cholecystokinin. Yep. And morning fresh liquid stimulator. <laughs> uh, Detergent stimulator. That's CCK, oh, okay. right? Uh, cholecystokinin. And the other one's secretin. Okay. Which... I knew I was wrong. Sounds like a real basic name, right? Secretin. But That's something you would come up with. It's the first hormone ever discovered. Really? That's why it had that name, because it was secreted. Oh, wonderful. Uh, anyway, so what these two hormones do, particularly CCK... Tells the gallbladder to contract. Yep. Out, out of the gallbladder comes the bile, which was made by the liver, but stored in the gallbladder. And bile's made up of bile salts, cholesterol, and water. Yep. And so this shoots down into the duodenum um, with a bit of um, fluid from the pancreas. Well, the fluid from the pancreas or the pancreatic juice yeah. is also getting released because both CCK and secretin also travel to the pancreas. So the pancreas releases the juices and that includes the enzymes to break down proteins and carbs, but the enzymes that also break down, break down fats called lipases. And another thing that comes out is bicarbonate. And bicarbonate okay, yeah. neutralizes any acid coming from the stomach, but also allows for the lipases to work properly. Sure. You need a basic environment, like the environment you live in. We need a basic environment that allows to chop these fats up. So okay, first so thing that happens, bile comes in, 
And because you said it's a detergent, it like, like morning fresh. Like morning fresh. Hopefully, our American listeners have morning fresh. Anyway, detergent. Okay, washing up detergent. It breaks the big glo- globules into smaller, more manageable pieces. Okay. Yep. Right. And then emulsifies. Did you say that? No, that's a good okay, term. Emulsifies. So these emulsification droplets we could use. So much smaller. Now the lipase can act on it. Little scissors, molecular scissors. Chops the lipase. Chops it up into fatty acids and a glycerol with a single fatty acid, which yeah. is a monoglyceride. That's right. So it chops two of the three fatty acids off the triglyceride, and so you got three fatty acids now. You got monoglyceride. Uh, and cholesterol. Okay, right? they're the main things now floating around because the phospholipids they had their yep. they had their um, fatty acids chopped off as well. And fat soluble vitamins. Yes, A D E K. Deca D E K A. Okay, doesn't matter so what order. Combines those all into a, a bundle. Yeah. So the the bile salts surround all these, and then the bile salts now allow for this sort of bundle of f- fat and fat-soluble substances to be absorbed into the enterocyte, okay. which is the cell of the intestines. And what's this little globule thing called? Mycel? Michelle? Michelle. Michelle. The, the Beatles sang about it. Oh, uh, Michelle, my bell. Yeah. And so now you've got in the enterocyte... Which I think is 50 times smaller than the initial fat droplet. What the, is? The Michelle. Oh, Okay. So this is after the bile salts and yeah, yeah. the lipases. Okay, so now it gets spat into the enterocyte, which yep. is the cells of the intestine. That's right. Um, these get, get kind of broken apart. It's oh. just because the bile doesn't move through. Oh, okay. So the bile stays in the lumen of the intestines and sort of just pushes in the fatty acids, monoglyceride and cholesterol into the enterocyte. And here, they get repackaged back into triglycerides. Okay, so, so the smooth endoplasmic reticulum puts it back into tags. Triglycerides. Yeah, and then adds a bit of protein to it from the rough ER. Yeah. And then it gets pushed into another bundle, which we call a column micron. Well, the Golgi apparatus does this. Okay, that's the packaging. And then it spits it out, but not into the blood, like the other two macronutrients, but into the lymphatics. Yes. Yep, or the lacteal. Right. And then that will go into bigger lympho vessels and then go all the way up (laughs) all the way up to kind of the brachiocephalic subclavian vein and then it jumps in to the thoracic duct I think it's called and then now it goes into the blood so now we have the colomicron in the blood yes you said that very quick the colomicron is filled with triglycerides cholesterol uh, and some fat soluble stuff and proteins and proteins and all the colomicron does is now that it's in the bloodstream it can deliver these triglycerides to muscle and adipose tissue, yep. wherever drops it deems it necessary, drops it off. And once it drops it off, it becomes a chylomicron remnant, which has low amounts of fatty acids, but high amounts of cholesterol. And then that goes back to the liver for processing. Okay, brilliant. So this is what's happening after you eat that burger. Yep. But what's happening if you haven't eaten for six to 10 hours, maybe, and your muscle tissues and adipose tissue needs some fat? I guess the liver has to do something else for it. It does indeed. It needs to make its own version of a colomicron. Remember, the colomicron was made by the intestines, but now the liver's making something that's similar called a lipoprotein. Okay. And it makes one called a VLDL, a very low-density lipoprotein. Okay. And that's basically like the colomicron. It has fatty acids and cholesterol. A little bit of protein. A little bit of protein. That's what's called lipoprotein. But it's got more fatty acids compared to cholesterol. Okay. And that's why it's called a very low density lipoprotein. Okay. So that jumps out of the liver. What's it do? Goes back into the blood. Yep. Travels around the blood, does something similar to the colomicron, just drops off fatty acids and cholesterols to cells and certain tissues that need it in high abundance, like adipose cells. So that's fat cells. Yep. Muscle cells. And probably some organs like endocrine organs that need fat or cholesterol to make its hormones like mm. the gonads, um, the adrenal cortex to make things like aldosterone, cortisol, um, and, and then the, f- the adrogen, androgens? Androgens. Yep. Uh, and so whilst it's doing this, it's losing a lot of fat. Fatty acids, yeah. Yeah. And then it's becoming... Far more fatty acids than cholesterol. Yeah. Right? And it's kind of getting closer to... Not closer, but there's... A greater portion of, or there's more protein to the fat now or closer to it. And so we change the name from VLDLs to maybe IDLs, intermediate. 
density lipoproteins. Yep. And even to the point where it might get to low density lipoproteins, yeah. which is LDLs. So this is like a, a, a trailer with its load on the back, not tied down properly. So this is like Mike driving his pickup truck yep. or, or ute that we call it in Australia without it being covered. Yeah. And he's driving to the ute with all this rubbish and by the time he's got the ute, there's nothing left. It's just all along the roadside yep. that he's driven and so it's started to form plaques and so forth. That's right. On the road, which is lie. generally why the LDLs is considered a bad fat. But Kevin will talk about this more scientifically than we have just then. Yes. So we've spoken about the VLDLs, the IDLs and the LDLs and the very last one before we introduce Kevin, is HDLs. the HDLs, the, the high liver, density. liver makes that one, Yep. which is kind of like me in my pickup truck that I have to follow Mike. I have to go and pick up all the rubbish he's just dropped off. So the HDL is considered, or the high density lipoprotein, so it's got a greater amount of protein. Yeah. So I think it's close to 50-50, right? And, uh, and the main point here is cholesterol. Yeah. And so it's going along and kind of picking things up along the way to... To t- hopefully pull that stuff. But what's it picking up? All the stuff that you dropped up. The cholesterol yeah. mainly. Yeah. That's what we're going to talk about here because Kevin is going to talk about LDL and HDL levels and how HDLs tend to pick up the cholesterol and bring it back to the liver. And so what certain foods might be good for that? Yeah, what certain foods might be good for that? And then, and then LDLs sort of do the opposite and drop yeah. it off. And what foods also cause that one. That's right. And I think that this is where... And then blood tests. So when you go to a, the blood, get your total cholesterol done, and they say, this is your total cholesterol, this is your HDL level, your LDL levels, this is the ratio. You're going to potentially have some heart problems if you don't rectify this. He'll talk to us about whether this is true or not. Let's introduce Kevin. <laughs> 